Hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to talk about a few problems here uh, that I'd like to look at, maybe a total of nine. Uh, at least that's the plan right now. I might have to do it over two sessions, but we'll see how this whole thing proceeds. Uh, possibly not. Maybe I can get through all of them uh, right now as I'm going through them. Uh, this discussion uh, heavily uses some of the brilliant work uh, associated with the books uh, pertaining to physics of college physics, college physics 11th edition, uh, Surway and Viul, Volume 2. College physics 11th edition, Surway and Viul, Volume 2 some of the solutions uh, that are brilliantly offered uh, in, in much of the material and in, in just some of the brilliantly covered material in this book. Also, uh, there is another textbook to look at, uh, and this just says Physics for Scientists and Engineers, Foundations and Connections with Modern Physics, Volume 2. Uh, Dr. Katz, it's the first edition. Uh, I am certainly not. Uh, I'm certainly not advertising any textbooks here. Uh, I'm saying these are the textbooks that I'm using in the classes that I'm teaching, and uh, you know it's it's been a great great experience. And uh, and for the students that I have, where we're using these books, I have some solutions uh, to various problems that that we find. So and as I've said in the past, so that that that's for sure. There are countless, not countless, but there are. There are very many great textbooks on physics that are out there. Absolutely. There are very many great textbooks in physics that are out there. So uh, that's, that's something to be known. Uh, among them, these books are quite good as well. So uh, we're uh, pertaining to the classes I teach, if it's a non-calculus base, if it's non-calculus based physics, we're using the Surway and Viul book, volume 2, 11th edition. And for the calculus based, we're using the Katz book, volume two, first edition. So Katz book, volume two, first edition for calculus based physics, mechanics, and electricity and magnetism. And uh, for non calculus based physics, we are using the Surway and Viul book, volume two, 11th edition. And I'm going to look at reflection and refraction of light and mirror equation and thin lens equation. There's a total of nine problems. Let me see how I, I'll, I'll solve them the way that I presented them uh, to my classes. Um, and those who are in my classes will be able to find the appropriate problems. For the non-CALC class, these problems, among many others, are to be found uh, on the Canvas site. Uh, same thing on the Canvas site. Uh, problems can be found. Uh, per pertaining to what I'm doing on the Canvas site as well in the, in the calculus-based version uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the physics that's being taught. So these are the two books. These are the problems that are being um, that are being discussed. Let's see. Let's see at what pace I can take this and just try to help you out a little bit so we have them there. Uh, I'll try to read these things out to you while I'm doing them and maybe just give you a little sum summary of what the question is that is being asked. And, uh, and that should help us a little bit. So I'll leave a little bit of this up here, at least what's on top here. I'll erase this, and we will proceed. Okay, um, with that in mind, let's look at the Surway and Viul book, and let's look at from topic, 20, uh, topic 22, number 21, otherwise just known as the Surway book.
Sure, we. Uh, topic 22, problem number 21. Uh, for problem number 21, a man shines a flashlight from a boat into the water. Illustrated, uh, a rock, uh, uh, illuminating a rock, uh, as in the figure. What is the angle of incidence for that to take place? Okay, they don't say... You know, there's, there's a lot said and a lot not said, I guess you could say. So let's just take a look at it. Basically, there is the surface of the water. Uh, at a depth of three meters, there is a rock, which is two and a half meters from the point of incidence. Two and a half meters from the point of incidence, and uh, the person, you know, there's, there's a person somewhere on a boat, guys, and this is definitely not going to be some great work of art. Uh, person's up here somewhere, he, sh he shines the light. Uh, there are, here it is, uh, shines the light right here. Call that theta one. And it ends up getting here, theta 2, it ends up shining over here. So they're giving us some data, not a lot of data, but uh, hopefully enough data to get the job done. Well, it's kind of in the back of your mind with a lot of these uh, situations. You've got Snell's Law. And we've talked about this already uh, in other places, on film and otherwise, if, if, you're, if you've been in my classes. So you look at this and you say, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's something in the back of our mind. Let's, let's find out everything that we can find out, I guess, uh, and find out what we have here. Well, there's enough data here to say this is a right triangle. Here's theta 2. Here is a leg of a right triangle. Here's another leg of a right triangle. Uh, this, over the run of that, the rise, it doesn't look like a rise, but we can call it the rise if it's opposite this. The rise over the run is the tangent of theta sub 2. Tangent of theta sub 2 is opposite over adjacent, maybe put it that way, meters and meters cancel out. Theta 2 is going to be the inverse tangent of this. And uh, kind of the end of the story at that point. I mean, a lot, it's this, the, the most major portion of the problem is, is basically this. You get it down to here, you've got 39.806 degrees. That's theta 2. Tell you what, at that point, this is what we need. We are told that the index of refraction of water is 1.33. The index of refraction of air is very nearly 1. It's as though the light is going through a vacuum. And I've seen there's, there's different numbers get used. I think in, the, in Dr. Katz's book, uh, she's a lot more rigorous as to what the actual, um, what the actual number is. It's like 1.00, a whole bunch of zeros, then, then, then some non-zero numbers. But for our purposes, we're fine. If you want to look at it like this, they're asking you, what is the angle of incidence? The angle of incidence, according to what we know and according to the way things are drawn, the angle of incidence is going to be theta sub 1. Well, how does that work? Well, if you're looking at, if you're looking at this, take... Let's just proceed. Sine theta 1 we've got 
Theta 1 is going to be the inverse sine of this. Well, what's that? It's going to be the inverse sine. Let's see what we got here. Uh, this is medium 2. This is medium 1. This pertains to N1. This pertains to N2. Uh, water's got 1.333 index of refractions. That's the N2. A little bit more room, guys. Let's have a look here. Uh, N2, N2 is 1.333, N1 is 1, and sine of this is the sine of, you know, sine theta 2 is 39.806. The rest is deal with the calculator and get the answer. Eight point five eight degrees. Very good. Um, so we're looking at this, and that's how it ends. Well, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's just, you know the drawing's pretty. So the way we're looking at it, the person looking up here perceives the rock to be right down here somewhere when actually it's 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 closer to this vertical so of interest okay very good that was 21 from that same topic uh, let's go to topic 44 uh, forgive me problem number 44 from topic 22 the topic doesn't change rather Topic, uh, the, sur the, the survey book calls topics, calls chapters topics. Uh, so let's go for 44 on this one. Similar type of a problem. Okay, for 44, same topic 22 from the survey book, a boy floating on a, on a pond watches a fish swim away from him. If the fish is 2.25 meters beneath the surface, from what maximum distance D will he be able to see the fish? Neglect the height of the boy's eyes above the water. There is the idea of, uh, well, let's just see here, guys. Let me go to it and if I don't say anything. There is the idea of a critical angle, uh, total internal reflection happening beyond a certain, you know, at a certain point and beyond, there's total internal reflection that can happen. So to look at this, you know, basically we're, we're, the, the child's going to see the fish just barely at a 90 degree angle with the vertical if you're looking at this. So essentially,
for 44. Uh, again, there's a child here. Forgive my drawings uh, of people. They're not that good. So I just, I'll just say, there's a person. Um, and, you know, there's this right here. There's a distance D that the fish could be from the vertical. Notice how I draw everything the same way. Uh, the distance straight down, not D rather, I'm sorry, forgive me, Just they give a specific number, uh, and it's not the same as this necessarily, uh, is 2.25 meters. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that can be said here. So I think what we're looking at is there's got to be an angle where this works, where the, the, light, the light from the fish is going to show up and, and, you know, break the, you know, there's no good way to write this guy sometimes. Uh, it's going to come this way and bam, break right like that. So that would be a 90 degree angle. This would be some angle theta here. So uh, let's see how they're asking this here. A boy floating on a pond watches a fish swim away from him as I've just shown in the figure. Rather, you know, uh, as, as we see up here, obviously the book does a better job than I do with the colors and the drawing and stuff. but. A boy floating on a pond watches a fish swim away from him, as in the figure. If the fish is 2.25 meters beneath the surface, for what maximum distance D would he be able to see the fish? Would the child be able to see the fish? Neglect the height of the boy's eyes above the water. You're essentially looking at a lot of ways you can do it. Uh, up here, and here, down here is like, like we said, we, we got water. Uh, on top, this is air, this is roughly one for an N, and N of water we got this um, you know there's a lot of ways to go here guys, I mean it not, it's, it's, it's it's kind of a linguistic issue at some point, and that's not really much of an issue. How we're going to do things in terms of the semantics. We know this. We just talked about this. Uh, let's, let's write it here. N air sign. The child, this thing barely breaks through the water, barely breaks through, and takes an angle like this. And this one's doing this. And this is doing that. Um, N air sine 90 degrees and water, they're asking us basically at what angle. Um, and again, the way the question gets asked, I mean, it's a, little, it's a little, little, little tough to look at, I guess, or a little tough to kind of figure out how they're asking it. For what maximum distance D will he be able to see it? Well, no, that's actually, that, that's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, let's find the distance, but to find the distance, we need to find theta sub 2, or uh, let me see how I wrote it, uh, theta, sub, theta sub w, theta associated with this right here. Um, and this is theta w, and this is the critical angle here. This is the theta of 90 degrees. Um, you know, theta air, I guess you could say. And that's equal to 90 degrees. Theta of air, 90 degrees. Theta W, I don't know what it is, but I need to know what it is so then I can just play trigonometry. The rest, let's just do it. Uh, you've got the sine of theta, sine theta W. Sine theta W equals N air over N W uh, or N water. Give the alphabet soup here, you guys. Sine 90 degrees 
sine theta w is n air over n water, sine of 90 degrees is 1. Get the inverse sine of this. Get the inverse sine of that quantity. Well, the inverse sine of n air over n water is the inverse sine of n air over n water. Uh, the angle is 48.607 degrees. Okay. Didn't really ask that specifically as an end answer, but it's a nice answer to have. Um, so what do we know? Well, I mean, we've got the hardest part of the problem solved, basically, guys. Once we got this, once we know what that is, we know that the tangent of theta sub w is opposite over adjacent. Adjacent is 2.25. D over 2.25 is the tan of theta w. D over 2.25 is the tan of theta w. D is equal to 2.25 times the tan of theta w. D equals 2.25 uh, times the tangent, whatever it's going to be, of theta w. Well, we know that theta w is 48.607. times the tangent of 48.607. Definitely, that's the story, guys. And it comes out to um, 2.553 meters. Two point five five three meters would be what D is. So there it is. I don't know how good the it shows on camera, guys. It should show okay, but just in case. Okay, so there we go. Um, those are problems 21 and 24 from the survey book from topic 22, pages 746 to 749. Um, so, okay, very good. Let's go, let's stay with the survey book and go from, you know, the reflection, the reflection and refraction of light. I think that's even the chapter, the way it's, uh, in fact, that is the chapter, the way they actually describe it in the survey book. Topic 22 is reflection, uh, is reflection and refraction of light. And those were problems 21 and, uh, 21 and 44 uh, from topic 22. Let's go to topic 23 in the same survey book. Um, topic 23 in the same survey book, pages 776 to 781. Problems 33, 43, 44. Let's see how that goes.
Okay, guys, there's some great example problems in both books, in the, both in the Katz book and in the Surway book. Some phenomenal, phenomenal notes, phenomenal example problems, really good explanation. And as I said, there's countless physics books out there, new and, new and old, that have phenomenal uh, discussion of the topics of physics, the basic topics of physics. And all of them do a great job. Very many of the books out there do a great job, both old and new, pertaining uh, to much of the basic physics that's out there. So some great coverage here that they have, great notes. Uh, always stay, you know, in the textbooks you're using, make sure you're using your textbook. There's, they, they tend to have great notes, regardless of the textbook, uh, for the most part. With that in mind, um, let's start with, with, uh, with problem number 33 from topic 23, and we'll kind of take it from there. That's right. Let me just look. Right. Uh, topic, topic 23, topic 23, problems 33, 43, and 44. Um, let's look at let's look at problem 33 from there. All right, guys, um, getting into mirrors, lenses, things of that nature, let's see what we can say here. Uh, for 33, for 33, a diverging lens has a focal length of magnitude 20 centimeters. A diverging lens has a focal length of magnitude 20 centimeters. A diverging lens is going to have a negative focal length. So if it has a focal length of magnitude 20 centimeters, the focal length in reality is negative 20 centimeters, which is, of course, of magnitude 20 centimeters. If it's a diverging lens, it has a negative focal length. If it's a converging lens, it has a positive focal length. OK, so let's take a look at that. A diverging lens has a focal length of magnitude 20 centimeters. A, locate the images for object distances of uh, Roman numeral 1, 40 centimeters. Roman numeral 2, 20 centimeters. Roman numeral 3, 10 centimeters. For each case, state whether the image is B, real or virtual, C, upright or inverted, D, for each case, find the magnification. OK. Uh, good amount of stuff, so let's, let's go for it. Diverging lens, negative focal length. So. As we said, we know from the thin lens equation, and many books offer a decent proof on this, I think ours do as well, whether it be the Surway book or the Katz book, and other books as well, offer pretty decent proof on this stuff. So something to look at as well. We look at something like this. If you solve for 1 over Q, you've got 1 over Q equals uh, 1 over f minus 1 over p. True. Uh, if you solve for q, I mean, you got to do a lot of stuff here. You got to make it, you know, um, got to make a long story short how that all is going to happen. What you're going to do is, if you solve for q, you got to get the inverse of each side. Well. 
the get the multiplicative inverse on each side. The multiplicative inverse of 1 over q is just q. That's pretty easy. The multiplicative inverse of this is a little more complicated. No real shortcut to it. You got to get it right. You got it to here. Well, sure. If you multiply by p top and bottom, If you multiply by f top and bottom, this bottom stuff multiplied by p top and bottom right here, just this guy, the one over f, multiplied by p, multiplied by p over p, multiplied by the ratio p over p, take one over f and multiply by the ratio p over p, and you get this. Take 1 over p and multiply it by the ratio f over f, and you get this. And what does that mean? Well, you got a common denominator is what it means. You got this. Do what you got to do here. And you got that. I mean, that's, a, that's, that's kind of a, for, for our circumstances at least, this is a good, a good conclusion. I mean, we, we, we draw a, a very interesting, con it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice general conclusion for this particular circumstance. And for numerous other circumstances, for that matter, I guess you could say. Uh, you can also say, might as well put a lot of this stuff down there, and then you, just, you, you plug into, uh, into the appropriate equations. Um, magnification is a number of things. I mean, it's, it's, it's height over height, right? Image height, image height over actual height. And we know that's equal to this based on derivations that they've given us in the book. Uh, so we know this could be the case. If that's the case, you've got, put a negative in front of Q. Well, Q, we said, was PF over... Uh, forgive me, yeah, we said Q was PF over P minus F. P is P. P's cancel. So I guess what we're doing here, you got this right here. Now remember, in the back of your mind, they told us this in terms of centimeters. You know, just, just make sure units agree. That's the big thing. But you got this right here for magnification. So magnification So you're looking at that. Well, I, I, you know what, guys? Knowing all that, knowing these two, tells us an awful lot of this problem, no matter how many problem parts there are. So what we have is, let's see here, guys. So no matter how many problem parts that there are, this is kind of the, the big you know, the, the, the big part of the problem are, are these two conclusions that we've drawn. So we're looking pretty good. So let's take a look at it. I mean, we know what we know.
Well, you know, I think they're asking a bunch of stuff here. They're saying, um, for A part one, I mean, the way, they, the, the, way the, prob the, the way the problem is kind of phrased as far as the problem parts, it's potentially a little on the confusing side as far as like how you're going to actually label the answers. That's not a big deal. The big thing is, right here, this gets us to where we need to go, and we're going to get the answers just fine. Um, part A associated with this part, uh, small Roman numeral 1, where the, the object distance is 40 centimeters, you're essentially, uh, you know, when you're looking at something like this, you're, you're saying, okay, well, let me, here we go. I mean, I, I know this. Maybe emphasize this a little more on my part. They told us this. So let's deal with it. Um, they're saying this. They're saying this. Plug this P right here. This is 40. This is negative 20. 40 times negative 20 is negative 800. Um, 40 times negative 20 is negative 800. P is 40. F is negative 20. 40 minus negative 20 is positive 60. Negative 800, negative 800 divided by positive 60 is going to be something uh, in, it's, it's going to be 13 and a third is what it's going to be. Uh, but it's going to be a negative. So it's in front of the lens. So when you do this whole song and dance right here, you're getting, you plug, you plug that into here and you, you got it. And it's going to be essentially, it's a negative 13.33 centimeters. The natural, I'm not sure that, the way you're, you're expecting it, what you think would be the natural way for this to proceed, and you'd expect it is, Here's the object, and on the other side of the lens, you're expecting the image to form. According to this, the image forms as though it's on the same side of the lens as the object. That's clearly a virtual image. The negative here indicates that. This would have been a positive answer. This would have been on the other side of the lens, on the opposite side of the lens, on the side of the lens that the, that the object is not on. Because it's negative, however, the Q, it's on the same side of the lens that the object is on. It's a virtual image. Um, so it's dev you know, that's, that's a virtual image. Um, See what we got here, the way, the way they say this. They got A right here. There's a number of ways they write it. Let me, maybe I got my bearings later on when I was looking at this thing. So we had P at 40 centimeters. A is Q equals negative 13.33 centimeters. That's in front of the lens. It's virtual because it's in front of the lens. Q is less than zero. Can't have that. I mean, for, and, then, and then have and then call it real. So it's let Q is less than zero. So it's virtual. C the magnification is negative Q over P. The opposite of negative 13.33 over 40, opposite of a negative, opposite of a negative is positive. At the end of the day, the magnification is one third, so it's upright. If it's a positive magnifica magnification, positive mag magnification means it's an upright image. So it's this, uh, that would be D. Yeah, like I said, there's a whole alphabet soup here, guys, but let me, let me put C right here then, I guess. C is, it's upright. Upright, though it's still virtual. Upright because the magnification is positive. 
So it's upright, and the magnification is one third, is 0.33, and that's it. It is basically, it is essentially the exact same argument proceeding with, how many they gave here? They, they gave three scenarios, guys. They gave I equals, I equals 40, you know, I, P is equal to 40 centimeters. Um, you know, uh, uh, small Roman numeral one, P equals 40 centimeters. Small Roman numeral two, P equals 20 centimeters. Small Roman numeral three, P equals 10 centimeters. So that's, yeah, so I mean, that, that's kind of where we're at. It's the exact same argument, guys, that I did right here. Not much, not, not any different in that regard. So when you do it, We're just going to go down, you know, like I said, you go down the line with this stuff. So let's, uh, let's keep as much as we can on here, guys. I'll try to, try to write this in one place, I guess, give you an idea of what was happening. So the argument that I just showed you holds for the other two scenarios verbatim, practically verbatim. So... It's as simple as that. I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're telling you for one, for two, for three, and they got in low case Roman numerals, guys. They had P was equal to 40 centimeters. For two, they got P equal to 20 centimeters. Um, and for three, they got P equal to 10 centimeters. It is the exact same argument. The exact same argument that you may, I'm not, you're not gonna get the exact same answer necessarily. I'm sure you're not. Um, most likely scenario, but it's this, this, this. We know the focal length is magnitude 20, but it's a diverging lens. Magnitude, magnitude 20 for a diverging lens is negative 20 for this. Uh, and that is that's about where we're going to go when you do something like this. So we already did we already did one, two. Here we go. I mean, P is twenty centimeters. Uh, find Q. Find Q. Well, P is twenty centimeters. F is negative twenty. Uh, 20 times negative 20 is negative 400. Negative 400 divided by this difference, and so it's negative, uh, forgive me, yeah, right. Uh, positive 20 divided by negative 20 is negative 400. This is positive 20 minus a negative 20 is plus 20. That's, that's 40 on the bottom. Negative 400, uh, Negative 400 on top divided by positive 40 is negative 10. Uh, yeah, that means it is 10 centimeters. Uh, it's a virtual image because it's a negative image distance. So it's virtual. C, magnification. Here it goes. Uh, we found Q, as we said, to be negative 10. The, op you know, the opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. Image distance, did you say it was 20 to begin with? Yeah, it was 20 on that one, right? The opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. Positive 10 divided by positive 20. There's your magnification. Uh, it is an upright image.
Guys, these are the arguments. These are, these, you know, it's, it's essentially this is the way the moves get taken place uh, to get this thing under control. Um, not much to say beyond that. I just want to make sure I didn't write something crazy here, guys. Yeah, it should be correct. It should be fine. You know, pretty straightforward stuff. Let's go. Let's keep going, I guess. Uh, let's look at... Let's take a look at Roman numeral 3, low case, where P is equal to 10 centimeters. Let's keep playing the game. Um, 10 centimeters. Let's see what we got here. Uh, P is 10. This is negative 20. 10 times negative 20 is negative 200. 10 minus a negative 20, 10 minus a negative 20 is 10 plus 20, it's 30. 30 goes into negative 200, negative 6 and 2 thirds times. So what we have here is, and that'll be the Q, negative 6 and 2 thirds times, we can round it to here, we're fine. Uh, yeah, Q is less than zero. It is in front of the lens again, guys. This is a virtual image. In front virtual. What's the magnification? Um, magnification is pretty interesting. I mean, you're talking about uh, the opposite of negative 6.67 over P, a distance 10. That's about two thirds. Point six seven. Uh, upright image. Uh, so it's you know up you know again upright image guys. I, I where I put these. Sorry, guys, these get answered multiple times. It depends how the question's asked. The bottom line is, let's make sure we answer the question. We're understanding the topic. Uh, and we're getting this. So that is 33. That is 33. How something plays out. There it is. Um, there is a great problem, problem number 44. And... Take a look. Forgive me, uh, problem number 43, rather. Uh, should be very, very similar here, a, a, at least much of what we just said. So let's go to, let's go to number, uh, number 43 from the survey book as well. Number 43, a, a one centimeter high object is placed four centimeters to the left of a converging lens of focal length eight centimeters. It is a positive focal length because it's a converging lens, you guys. A diverging lens of a diverging a diverging lens of focal length negative sixteen point zero zero centimeters. Uh, a diverging lens of focal length negative sixteen point zero zero centimeters is six 
centimeters to the right of the converging lens. Find the position and height of the final image. Is the image inverted or upright, real or virtual? So there's a lot there. Uh, 44 kind of goes in that direction as well. So does 43. So let's go there. see here there's a lot to say let's say it well you heard what I read I mean it's essentially you've got um, Again, it's not really drawn to any kind of great scale, you guys. This is a converging lens. You are going to put an object that's standing straight up to a height of one centimeter. You're going to put it four centimeters away. Uh, four centimeters away from the converging lens. There's the object. So it's here. And there's this diverging lens. And this is not drawn to some great scale, guys, but... Six centimeters there. We've talked about stuff in the past. Let's use what we talked about in the past. Now we're saying, like, wh where does this thing finally end? What's going to happen is two things are going to happen. Um, okay, so let me just see, guys, exactly how we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to ignore the diverging lens at first glance and just try to say, okay, there is a general formula uh, from, the, from the lens equation that kind of answered a lot of things. And we already talked, we just talked about it, in fact, and the problem that we just solved. We know that. This works for all kinds of lenses. Diverging lenses, converging lenses. This works. The lens equation, the lens equation that got us this, remember the 1 over F equals 1 over P plus 1 over Q, however you, however you want to write this. Um, this holds for converging lenses and diverging lenses. So this is going to hold. So we know this, and this is going to give us something. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, we're going to have to do, deal with two lenses. Let's deal with one of them first. Lens number one is right here, your far left. We're going to say image number one, and whatever image that's going to be, it's going to somehow become, and that's the focal length number one, over P1 minus F1. It's a converging lens. What that means is, The object is four centimeters away from lens number one. We call this lens, you know, there's a number of ways to write it, but this, this is the lens number one under consideration. We can call it lens number two, but right now, for sure, let's call this lens number one. P is four centimeters away. 
The focal length of the converging lens is 8 centimeters. Here we go. Uh, P1 is 4, F1 is 8. Q1 is negative 8 centimeters. Okay, fine. Um, we already know a lot. This is a virtual image. We haven't even gone to the diverging lens yet. The magnification is negative P, right, is, is negative Q over P. which comes out to negative of negative 8 over 4 is 2. The virtual image is the object for the second lens. So I just said a few things here. This would have been the end of the story. It would have been the end of the story had we not had to deal with this one, too. Well, this virtual image is the so-called object for the second lens. So where is it? Well, according to this, I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of uh, how it all happened, I mean, it, it, it would be this, this virtual image is the object for the second lens. So what we're talking about, P2, would be, okay, just trying to look here, guys, how they actually, right, and we can kind of do that, actually. We can call this one, call that two. Uh, yeah, it is. So what happens is, this is negative 8. So this virtual object, not real, but it acts like it's going to be real, at least for the mathematics, if Q1 is negative 8, it is 8 away from here over here. It's on this side. So it's 8, it's like from here to here. Here's 4, another 4 is the 8. So 8 this way. It has been magnified. Uh, how has it been magnified? Well, we, we said the magnification is 2, so it's twice as tall, actually. Um, and it's here. So now it's 2 centimeters in height. It is 8 centimeters to get to here, and another 6 centimeters to get to there, so what does that mean? Well, the 8 the eight and the 6 are going to be 14. This whole, this new distance under consideration is going to be 8 centimeters plus 6 centimeters. Okay? So if that's the case, we got to go back and do the, do the, you know, come back to this great equation, come back to these two great equations, that and that, P2 to the left of the diverge is to the diverging lens. So what we got here is the new situation fourteen centimeters. Here we go. We we deal with the, the lens equation. Again, this is where we're coming. We're gonna get where this thing is. We're using what we've done in the past all over the place. Modus operandi on this stuff. Q equals PF minus, Q equals PF over P minus F. What's that all about? The new object distance is 14. 
Uh, yeah, it's 14 away from there, and it's in front of it. Sounds good to me. It's a diverging lens we're dealing with now. So F2 is going to be a negative number, and that's negative 16 for the focal length. This is 14 minus... Multiply the two, should get negative 224 um, when that actually takes place. Just be sure of it. Um, 64 onto 160, yeah, 224. So that's negative. Go like this. What do we got? Well, okay, you, you, you basically got a distance here as well. The way this whole thing played out, this goes into here seven times 14 left over. Uh, that's seven over 15, you know. So negative, close to negative seven and a half. You know, it's, it's negative seven uh, and, uh, and seven fifteenths, something like that. Okay, what's going on here? Well, it's negative 7.47 for that one. So what you have here, Q2, is negative 7.47 centimeters. Uh, that ha that's, that's pretty interesting in its own right. Uh, that is, that's 7.47 in front of this, which is, if you go six over, you got another 1.47 to go over. It'll be 1.47 in front of the very first lens. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, let's let's you know slowly, I guess, uh, take this as we need to take it. Um, we, we've answered a number of things, so let's, let's just keep answering, I guess. Just, we'll just come back to some of the, the data that we acquired as we go here. <coughs> um, <clears throat> see what we can say here. Um, M2, so I guess, just watch what we're doing here, guys. So we, we had done this. Let me just try to make some sense here. Uh, M1 is plus 2. So the first magnification, dealing only with the converging lens, only with the converging lens and nothing else, was plus 2. M2 is the amount of magnification that takes place only in regard to the divergent lens and only vis-a-vis -vis the image that was dealt with to begin with, of this image right here. So let's, let me kind of, let's kind of really watch out for how that's going to proceed. Um, you got negative Q2 over P2. And we said negative Q2 is negative 7.47. The opposite of negative 7.47 is that P2 is... 14 away from this guy. It's always vis-a-vis -vis this. We got an answer of 7 point of 7 uh, of 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 7.47 in front of this guy. And we got the answer of the original distance of 6 plus 8 was 14. So that was 14. And over here it came over 6 and then 1.47, it came over a total of 7.47 here. Just deal with images related to the divergent lens, pretending this doesn't exist. The first time you did it, you pretended this didn't exist, and you got an answer. 
Then you did something else. Then, then you used, you just, did, you just did this. You pretended this didn't exist. You got an answer just pertaining to this. And then you said, okay, well, let me, let me deal with it. Let me get that answer and let me do something relative to the second one. Now I'm going to pretend the second one exists, but not the first one. And that's what this is all about. Opposite of a negative is positive. This divided by this is a little more than one. At the end of the day, I'm sorry, it's a little more than a half, rather. 7.47 divided by 14 is a little more than a half. And that's that. Well, what's the total magnification? There's a formula that says the total magnification is going to be M1, just strictly for the first lens, which happens to be a converging lens. doesn't matter, though. doesn't matter what kind of lenses they are, but find the magnification associated with the first lens, Find the magnification associated with the second lens. Do the multiplication. And you go 2 times this. You get 1 point, 1 point 0 0.066 or 1.067 or 1.07. You get a whole bunch of, you know, I wrote this a number of ways. But the bottom line is the methodology at this point, you guys. Let's at least know where we're at. That's approximately... Different places are writing different, I mean, it depends who's giving you the answer on this thing. Um, and how they want to give the answer. So you got this. The final position of the final image. That's 7.47 centimeters to the left of the second lens, which is 1.47 centimeters uh, in front of the first lens. But it's 7.47 centimeters in front, of, uh, in front of that lens. So there's a lot here. It's the way you can write it. I mean, so it's in front of the second lens, which is... 7.47 and 7.47 centimeters in front of this, which is 1.47 centimeters in front of that. Um, pretty fascinating. Um, okay, uh, let me. The final position, the final position, position of final image. Q is this. 7.47, 7.47 centimeters to the left of the second lens. We just said that. It's an upright image. It's a virtual image because it's a negative image distance, the virtual image, and all that stuff. So, okay, I kind of pretty much answered this. Uh, let me just kind of write it the way I wrote it in the notes. A few things in there has got to be said. And how they pertain to the different parts of what they're trying to ask, I guess you could say. That's not a big deal. Uh, as long as you, you have it all here. Just be careful how you're writing answers, guys. If you're taking one of my exams, obviously, uh, there, there is that, that, that precision we have to have. But essentially, I mean, it came out of it, M equals 1.07. It's an upright image. I mean, every time we, every time we did it, we were getting upright images. Uh, upright image, upright image. When you multiply them together, you get an upright image. Um, because Q2 is less, because Q2 is less than zero, that implies virtual That implies virtual image. How high is the image? How, you know, how big is the image? It's 1.07, the height of, of what it originally was. You had a 1 to begin with, didn't you? So you got this. 
Um, 1.07. 1.07 centimeters in height. The height initially was one centimeter. So you have what you have, guys. Um, 44 is basically saying the same thing. Uh, 44 is saying, well, it's a little different uh, situation. They have two converging lenses at this point. 44, two, converge, uh, two converging lenses having focal lengths of F1 equals 10 centimeters and F2 equals 20 centimeters. And they are converging, guys, so they are positive. We're not, not just the magnitude, but the actual magnitude and sign of converging lenses is positive. These are positive answers for F1 and F2. Two converging lenses having focal lengths of F1 equals 10 centimeters and F2 equals 20 centimeters are placed D equals 50 centimeters apart, as shown in the figure. The final image is to be located between the lenses at the position X equals 31.0 centimeters indicated. We'll take a look at that. A, how far to the left of the first lens should the object be positioned? B, what is the overall magnification of the system when it's all done, basically, guys? C, is the final image upright or inverted? Okay, it's a great problem. So this is problem 44 from the survey book. Problem 44 from topic 23. I did not want to erase that, but okay. We'll come back to it. Okay, um, 44, and we did say, we did this last time, guys, let me just make sure I fix this. We've got, as a general statement that we derived, What do we got here, guys? Um, they're, they're asking a number of things, uh, so let's, let's answer all of them. They gave us the focal lengths and everything else. Let's see exactly where we're going to go here. They kind of made... Okay, they, are, they, they gave us a good amount of data, so what they're asking here is, basically the tough question is, how far to the left of the first lens should the object be positioned? That's P. Find the overall magnification of the system. That's M. Um, is the final image upright or inverted? Okay. So they gave us a whole lot. So let's let's just go with the whole lot that was given to us initially uh, for the object. So. Okay, so we're saying the object is here. There is, again, this isn't drawn to, to any kind of great scale, you guys, and I'm kind of exaggerating some of the stuff that's present, so hopefully this is, 
something viable for us. Um, F2, focal length 2, is a positive 20 centimeters. These are converging lenses. F1 is a positive 10 centimeters. Um, let's see what we can say here, guys. Uh, so we got that. Okay, kind of down the middle here to kind of draw some kind of a distance here. Uh, they're giving us this distance. Fifty centimeters. Uh, again, guys, this is the, the scale here. We're not really sure what the. I don't want to get too cavalier. This is this right here is the final image, whatever that means, you know, whatever that's going to be. And we're going to, you know, we're going to determine a lot of stuff very shortly. There's the final image. This is focal lengths that we have. Okay, we got all that. We do not know Right now, we don't know what P is for this all to kind of take place. Um, this distance X thirty one centimeters. It's a lot there. Um, Look, uh, at least taking on faith the equations that they've given to us, uh, we're not going to be overly worried about getting this done. We know how to do it. We just did a problem that had a lot of the same mathematical subtlety associated with it, guys. So, um, so we'll see what we can do. We're going to talk about two images again. We're going to take a shot at this twice. This is the very, very final image right here. At the end of everything, this is the final image. Well, there's going to be two iterations, so to speak, when we're actually doing this to get, to get what we want, to get what we need done. So we can look at this and say, OK, well, Tell you what, we got the bread and butter equation here, and it's going to get us through this just the way it got us through the other time, and it's going to get us through in other times depending how the question's being asked, depending what's being asked of us. We can use that and get there. Let's talk about this not being present, and let's get the image associated just with lens one. Lens one with focal length one, you know. So we'll call this. You know, this is lens one, this is lens two, and whatever. And let's all so we'll take it from there. We'll say P1 is the P under consideration initially, and we're getting Q1 equals, well, here we go. I'm used, I told you, use that equation. Um, Let's go. Uh, you know, plug everything in and go. Um, we don't know. This is Q2. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, that's, that's the last Q there is. It's, this is going to be Q2, the final image. Final image is Q2. It's not Q1. Um, you know, we write it like this. That's Q2, and that is the final image. Well, we're not, we're not there yet. Let's go to Q1. Play the game here, guys, and... You know, get what you want to get. Well, 
you can kind of look at it. There's, there's, a, there's a pretty big problem here. We're actually trying to solve what P is. And we don't know what, what you know, and we don't, you know, there's a lot we don't know. We, we do know this. And let me just see here, guys. I think I might have done a little more gymnastics on this than I needed to. Right. Um, just see here, guys. I'm debating a little bit with myself how I want to do this. I've, I've shown it in the notes. I've shown it. I, I've shown it in a in a quite detailed manner. Don't know. Don't know. That's necessarily the best way to go. Um, I might diverge a little bit from where what I had done. Um, it's a lot you could say here. Okay, now here's we got to really watch our step here when we're doing all this stuff. Um, it's 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 a really big question. The, the real big question is you're basically solving for p. Uh, they they told you everything. Or they told you very much, except for P. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's a number of ways we could go here, but how far to the left of the lens should that object be positioned? I'm just trying to argue with myself a little bit where we could go with this. Um, right, I got this. And then use Q1 in the right way as P2. So I tell you what, uh, I'm trying, you know, this is, this is a huge, uh, of huge significance to not forget. It's the first lens. This is the object away from the first lens. That's the actual P you want to solve for. And that is equal to P1 whenever you're doing this. So you, you can say a number of things pertaining to that, but let me think. Let me think. This might be easier. I, I essentially did this, I think, in my notes. But so we're going to use this this Q one, whatever it may happen to be, is going to be the P two. It's going to be the new image distance from lens two. Well, okay. Um, we know, so this is going to be the new image distance. Uh, this, is going to, this Q1 is going to be the new, the, new, the new object. This Q1 is going to be the new, the Q1 is going to be the new pseudo object from lens 2. And then from there, we're going to arrive at the conclusion Q2, which is the final, final image. Um, if this becomes that object distance, you know, where is it? Well, that, that's, that's its own great question, I guess you could say. Um, so we look at this. Yeah, let me just see exactly what I want to say, guys. I'm kind of a little, I want to be very careful with the steps I take. Use Q1 in the, in the right way is P2. So there's, there's a number of ways to go here. And like I said, I was kind of thinking as I was actually doing the problem. Um, You know, down the road, we can find what P1 is. I mean, I, I, I kind of did something. You could do something with this if you actually found Q1. You could actually find P1, which is equal to P, if you wheel and deal here and solve for, uh, and solve for P1. Now, solving for P1 is not much of a big deal. I mean, it should be... Um, There's a whole lot of ways you could solve that. P1 down the road, I guess you could say. Let me just see exactly, guys. I want to... A 
Right. Okay. So, we can look. Uh, there's just, just so many ways you can, you can kind of have it like in the back of your mind. If you're going to solve for P, P would be, and I don't even know that I want to uh, do this, but I, I'd have it in the, in the back of my mind. I could say, if I finally know what Q1 is going to be, uh, I can actually solve for P1. I mean, I could go, I could multiply by the quantity P1 minus F1 on each side and divide by F1. And you got by, and you got what P one is. Um, it implies that I don't know. Let me just say that I mean P is just for the record. P is equal to P one, as we said. If you're looking at this reality right here, just based on this, if you multiply by the quantity P one minus F one on each side and divide by F one, you get uh, Q1, P1 minus F1, uh, the, the, you know, Q1, Q1 times the quantity P1 minus F1 over F1. That's true. What utility it will have, uh, we can kind of just keep it, I guess we can just keep this in the back of our mind. Uh, but there's a lot we got to do before that. Let's go right here. This new, this first image distance, this first image distance becomes, um, see how we're going to do this. This first, the, uh, the image distance associated with the first lens, this first image distance becomes the new object distance, becomes the pseudo object for this one. So we can work the problem and at the end finally get the very last image, the, la the last image, the second image distance, and then know what's going on. Um, and we can continue and solve for Q1. An easier, more intuitive way is to start with 1 over F1 equals 1 over P1 plus 1 over Q1. Do the whole thing, get the answer. Well, we've already done this. Use Q1 in the right way as P1, as P2. Um, Q2... So they're, they're just, okay, they're, I, I think I know what they're doing now. Okay, so you got this. I should know what they're doing because I think I wrote this down, but let me just kind of, it's been a while looking at it. Uh, if you want to look at this, Q2 is the same kind of argument, but you got to be careful. Um, it's P2, F2 over P2, F2. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so, you know, okay, so what? Uh, so, so what are you going to say about this? We know, you know, there, there's, there, there's a move being made here, I guess you could say. We know there's going to be a distance. <clears throat> it's coming out here. You're going to get a real image. Um, we're making the assumption, at least, we're going to get a real, uh, it's, a conver it's a converging lens, we're going to get a real image, it's going to come over to here somewhere, and what is that? Well, it's going to be whatever that is, that's P, uh, that's, that's Q1, that's Q1. Yeah, Q1 is somewhere over here, somewhere over here. Yeah, well, if Q1 is somewhere over here, how far is somewhere over here to get to there? Well, lens to lens is 50. This is between the two lenses. It's a distance from here, which is Q1. That distance Q1 minus the big distance 50 will tell you what this distance is from here to here. That's kind of the way the argument goes. So what you do here is you say the P2, object 2 is going to be is going to be the is going to be Q1. But again guys, here's the assumption. The assumption goes somewhere like this. You started here. Here's the object, the light from the object goes through the lens and the lens gives us an image on the other side of the lens because it's a converging lens. So we work under that assumption. Converging lens, object comes out 
on the other side of the lens. We see the object on the other side of the lens. Where is it? Well, it's Q1. Q1 is where? I, it's a good question. Um, if Q1 is here, uh, well, this, this, is kind of a, this is a very interesting question in its own right, actually, how this whole thing plays out. If Q1 is here and it's a positive number, and this whole thing is 50, this whole thing 50, you know, here we go. I don't want to mark this thing up too much, guys, but if this is, if that distance right here is Q1 and the whole thing is 50, 50 minus Q1 is this distance. Yeah, now you might say, wait a minute, what if it goes far away? What if it goes over here? Here's Q1. Here's Q1. Well, you know, that's an interesting story in its own right. If that's, if that's the case, this is much, this is bigger than 50. Bigger than 50 minus 50 is a negative number. This object is on the wrong side of this lens. Makes sense. It's supposed to be on this end. That, you know, that pseudo object is supposed to be on this side. So if it's a negative number, that makes sense. It's consistent. It still works, regardless. In that, in that logic, it still works. So let's take a look. So if that's, if that's the way we want to play it is, if it works either way, you're going, you're going 50 minus smaller than 50 and getting this, or you're going 50 minus bigger than 50, which is a negative number, which means this is already on the wrong side of this lens, and it is. It should be on that side. That's where the light was coming from. So even there, it's consistent. Even the negative is consistent. If that's the case. That P2, the pseudo object, P2, is going to be D minus Q1. Q1, Q1 is the distance that goes from the second. The di the Q1 is the distance from the first lens. I've got to relate that distance from the first lens. Whether it's here or whether it's over here, I've got to relate that distance from the first lens to the distance associated with the second lens. And this D minus Q1 does that. All right. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Let's, let's look at it. Well, yeah, okay. If that's the case, remember now, P2 is the same thing. It's Q minus, it's, it's, it's D minus, D minus Q1, All right, yeah, sounds good to me. I mean, we took, again, we said the P2, the, the second, ob, you know, the first object is really an object. Q1, or that associated with Q1, is a pseudo object, and it's located here, let's say. Or it might be located over here. Yeah, I know, but you gotta relate that to this lens, and that's where you go D minus Q1. Um, and that's where we're getting this. Well, that's, that's, that's a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting situation in that regard. So you're saying, okay, where's this going to go? Where does it end up going here? So we looked at it, and we, we look at the final image. The final image is Q2. So let's get this really under control, guys. I mean, this is Q2. And even here, they, here's that. And it's equal to all this. Um, yeah, Q2 is the final image, guys, and that is here. X equals 31 centimeters from here, which is how far from here? Well, it's 50 
minus 31. That ain't Q1. That, that's not D minus Q1. That's D minus Q2. And that's what I want to find out for now. I would like to find, you know, there's a lot we want to find out, but this is Q2, which is 31 away from the first, which is 19 away from here, because it's a total of 50. This is Q, this is Q2. This is Q2. This is Q2. This is Q2, 31 away from the lens. The first lens. 31 away from the first lens. And 50 is the total distance between the two lenses. It's between, the, and this is between the two. 31 away from the first lens. 50 minus 31 is 19. So Q2 is 19. I, I guess I, you know, I showed this in a, in a load of different ways, guys. Let's just kind of see exactly what I want to do. I don't want to erase too much. But eventually, I got to erase something. Um, Q2, right. Uh, now you, you're going to plug in. You're going to plug in Q1 equals this in there. You're going to plug in Q1 right into here as it is. Q2, um, let's see here, guys. Um, I'm not sure I'm even believing some of my own conclusions on this, but let's see here, just to be sure. Uh, you got this. Okay, right, right, right. I'm sorry. This is the Im this is the new image, but where is it in relation to this? It's on the wrong side of this lens. You wanted it to be on this end, so you wanted it to be on this side. So what you're going to do it because this is where it would be if it was a real image. Since it's virtual, it's going to be a negative number. Well, 50. 50 minus 31 is 19, but since it's on the wrong side of the lens, that, you know, 50 minus, 50 minus 31 being 19, that would be indicative of it being right here. 50 minus 31 is 19, but since it's on the wrong side of the lens, so to speak, this is negative 19. So, uh, okay, so yeah, please keep that in mind. It's negative 19 vis-a-vis -vis that second lens. So let's see what we got here, guys. I'm gonna have to yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna have to erase a good portion of this stuff guys so let me see where it comes out to um, a lot I don't want to erase but I have to erase a few things okay so you're gonna put the Q1 you're gonna put the Q1 right here yeah. from this guy right here. That's where the Q1 goes uh, for this right here, and it's gonna, you know, it's 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 a load of stuff there, guys. So let's see what I can do. Let me, yeah, I don't want to erase a lot of this stuff, so I don't know what's going on. But you just saw what I just said, so you know, it's quite the quite the gymnastics on this thing. The Q2 is going to be negative 19. I said 19. Yeah, 19 is the distance, but it's on the wrong side of the lens. You've got to call it negative 19. And you plugged in, you know, uh, D, you know, D, and this is kind of the fascinating thing. D minus... Q1, yeah, that for the second, for at the end of it, it'll be D minus Q1. And you play the game, guys, it's, it's doing something like this. Uh, we had, and this is, the Q, this is the Q2, D minus Q1, D minus Q1. So let's see here. D, D minus Q1 is P1, P1, F1. Okay, so 
it's more wordy than it is difficult, I guess you could say, guys, times F2 here. And that's what we were doing, that's what we did earlier uh, with some of the work we had done. Just now, the stuff I just erased, I just substituted what I told you had to get substituted in there. Uh, and then the other one, minus F2. All right, guys. Start plugging in everything you know. I mean, you know what F1 is. You know what F2 is. You know what X is. You know what D is. Um, it's X minus D to get the negative 19. So we already did that over there, way over there. You start plugging in all the numbers in there. Now, some numbers just ain't going to show up. Now, the thing is, this P1 is just P. So, as we said, P1 is equal to P, so eh, somewhat easier to look at. I mean, I guess. P is what we're trying to solve. That's the big thing. Plug in everything that you know, and there's a lot you don't know. I got the negative 19. That's the x minus d. It couldn't be 19 because it's on the wrong side of the lens. So I had to watch out for that. Uh, the distance D is 50. P I don't know. P I'm trying to solve. P I'm trying to solve. Uh, F1 is 10. Um, see what I got here. I mean, it's kind of... Uh, P I don't know, F1 is 10. It's a lot of math here, guys. I mean, um, F2 is 20, so F1 is 10. F1 is 10 centimeters, F2 is 20 centimeters. As long as all units agree, that's okay. You can bypass the units. As long as the units agree, that's the big thing. Um, What we're doing here, you know, how, how this whole thing actually played out when we did it. Um, so let's see what we got here. We got we this. So Q2 was this. Um, P2 was that. Q1 was something we already solved. So it was, it's a lot of stuff going on, guys. Uh, like I say, I erased a good amount. Luckily, you can go back. Here's the Q over there, and you can go, the, you know, the Q1 would be with the appropriate uh, items under consideration. Just want to look at it. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's a lengthy ordeal, guys. It, it's not something I'm, I would put on, like, a final exam where, I mean, something this long, uh, unless I had, like, three problems on the, on the final exam. And what kind of final exam would that be? You know, so... Something this long is not going to go on a final exam, on an in-person in final exam, that's for sure, would not. Uh, okay, so here it is. Let's keep going. I mean, they got D is 50 minus, uh, don't know what P is, F1 is 10. P is P. Um, just see where the heck I did this. No, I don't want to do it like that. Guys, forgive me. I'm going to start this over. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to. Let me try. Let me try to stay right where I'm at. I mean, the D is 50. Here it is. Minus. Now I'll go here. P is unknown. F1 is 10. Just stay there. Yeah, right. This is 10. No, this is actually P, which I don't know what it is, and that's 10. And that's here. Okay, there you go. That's 20. 
All right, that's, that's the way it should look. Uh, that's 50. Um, this is P, uh, F1 is 10. Okay, sorry guys, I was mixing up a lot of stuff here. Um, P is 10, forgive me, uh, that is P minus 10. All right, it's a mess. Uh, there's a lot there. Basically, guys, at this point, you're going to wheel and deal with the algebra to get it done. I mean, the, the big consideration was um, you found Q1 earlier. You know, you found Q1 earlier to be P F1 over P minus F1. All of that came from the general expression for Q. Um, and there's, you know, from this, from this right here, we can write a whole bunch, you know, from this right here, we can write Q, we can talk about and solve, we can solve for Q, we can solve for P, we can solve for F in terms of the other two, given what they gave to us. Um, so, that's where the Q1 came in. Um, and we, and we basically said, uh, that was Q1, and then we said, well, what, what is that going to be? What's that, you know? Um, I think we were looking at something like that for the Q1, and that became, that became object two uh, when we were doing certain things. So the Q2... Q2 just... I, I, it's so convoluted, guys, I almost have to say it again. I hope this doesn't throw you off more than it's going to help you. But P2 minus F2, that right there, that's what Q2 is going to be. Now, Q2, this, this P2 is what Q1 is. Um, and so that would be, you know, this, 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 this Q1, so the P1 is really the P, uh, was the real object distance that we were trying to find all this time. And Q1 becomes P2. So P2... Um, Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. So you're looking at it. That becomes P2. Q2 is going to be the negative. Q2 is the negative 19. P2 is Q1. Well, what is Q1? It's this. And you put all this right here. Um, Q1 minus D becomes the the new the new uh, the new object distance and that just comes right back to here it's 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 a, it's a bit of a mess guys look at it look at the notes I've, I've provided if you're in my class this should be fine too even on the board you should be able to see it but you might have to look at it more than once but that's essentially where the stuff is coming from well okay great we'll say all of this um, There it is. Uh, the rest is a lot of math, but you can do it. You will take this. This is one equation in one unknown. The unknown is P. Solve for P. It's going to be a mess, but it can be done. I mean, you saw, you saw that for P, and it's mission accomplished at that point. So you look at it. Just make sure we got it. Um, Right. I mean, just put put everything that you got to put in there, and I got I did put everything that, that goes there. Then you could say uh, 
when you do all of this mathematics, and it's going to be a, a little bit of a mess, uh, let's just see what, you know, maybe I can, I can cut it down a little bit, and I can maybe just jump to the conclusion we've got to jump to. But there's, there's essentially what we're talking to, guys. Images become new objects, new pseudo-objects, and you just have to get the distance to the other lens appropriately. If it's in front of that lens, well, you know, you know that's, that's an interesting point. Vis-a-vis -vis what happened here, the, the, the image that you got should have been, you know, uh, should have gone the other way when we had done this. So let's see what we have here, guys, when we do this. Again, a problem like this, don't, you know, don't be looking to see it on an exam, but it's, it's good gymnastics to actually do some of this stuff. When you look at it, you got, so it went that way, and at the end of the day, it came over here. So where is it? Yeah, well, it's not going to the right place. So that's why it was the negative 19. So we got the negative 19 right there. Tell you what I'm going to do. Um, go negative 19 equals, why don't you multiply the 20 all the way across. Get 1,000. Uh, all this, subtract 20 from it, 50 minus 20 is 30. Uh, there's a lot of ways to go here uh, to maybe make it shorter. I could make it shorter than I made it. Um, Uh, you could say, you could kind of make this a little bit easier. You could call this whole thing, and call this x, and you can call this 20 times x, because 20 times 10 is 200. So just that 10 piece. So you kind of, you could, there's probably a shorter, I believe this is maybe a good shortcut. Uh, just say, kind of in the back of our mind here, that, you know, just say x equals 10p over p minus 10. I'll get, we'll get to it. And we know if you, if you go 20 times x, you're going 20 times this, which is 200p over p minus 10. Let's see what we got. Let's see what happens. Uh, maybe this is faster. It's a little bit off from, let me see what I got here. I got 1,000 here. Uh, minus 20x over 30 minus x. Multiply by the quantity 30 minus x on each side. Multiply by the quantity 30 minus x on each side. So let's see where we can go here. This is. Multiply by 30 minus x on each side. This is. Why don't you add positive 570 on each side and add a positive 20x on each side? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it gets a little, I mean, it's still convoluted, but not, not as, hopefully not as bad. Uh, why don't you divide by 39 on each side? And we'll see. Perhaps that, that, that cuts down. Perhaps that breaks down. Perhaps that doesn't. We'd have to look at it. I don't have a calculator on me, guys. Let's just, let's just see where we go. I got x equals this. Well, I'll tell you what. If I got x equals this, why don't you come over here? Um, x equals... Ten p over p minus ten, and uh, here we go. If x equals ten p over p minus ten, and I'm setting it equal to this mass, uh, and this is where you're going to go. You're just going to keep working like this, guys. This is where it's going. Hope I didn't make any uh, clumsy arithmetic error, but you're doing something like that. You can, either way, it doesn't matter. Once you got to here, once you got here, look, you, it's your business at that point, guys. Uh, realistically, you can't give a problem like this on, on a short exam, obviously, but it's good, it's good for us to know how to do this stuff. Just the patience that we acquire, the mathematical precision we acquire, and actually just the special, you know, just looking at the physics Pretty neat stuff. This is what you're solving. You go about it any way you want, but you're going to get there. Well, I'm way down there. You know, hopefully this went right. I mean, I, like I said, I kind of rushed it, kind of went on my own different path to get there. But you can also follow just what I got in the notes, and it should be just fine. Multiply by 39 on each side. Multiply by p minus 10 on each side. Um, right. Um, going all over the place, get this over there, get the other thing over there, whatever, uh, you're looking at correct, um, negative over here, subtract over here, and you got, uh, you got 1180, I think. Um, let's see if that's actually true. 1,490, 1,570, uh, yeah, right. Uh, let me just see, just to be sure, guys. Right, uh, that'd be 1,180, that'd be uh, 1,480, uh, 1,570, that works just fine, guys. And you get this, and P is going to be this. Quite the mess. Um, but you got it to here. All right, well... Uh, actually, yeah, <laughs> basically on the mark. I did it a little differently. I, I did it essentially the same way in my notes, but I didn't take a shortcut in my notes. Not that what I did was necessarily a big shortcut. This is a lot easier to do on your own without, ha you know, without having to run across you know, 30 feet of a room and try to write everything on a blackboard. On your own, when you're looking at it, pencil and paper, it, tends to go, it, it does tend to go faster. So what happened? I mean, with this whole thing here, finally, I think we got it. Um, A is, you do this division, A is 13.3 centimeters. It's 13.3 in, it's cent in front of the first lens. That's A. B, you've seen me do it in the past, you guys. Uh, let's see what we got here. B, try to write somewhere. Guys, I just think it's going to be a little more visible over here. Uh, so A is
in front of the first lens, B, M equals magnification 1 times magnification 2, which is going to be negative Q1 over P1, and negative Q2 over P2. Now, you've got to be extremely careful here. Um, number of ways to go. What's going on here? Well, we did say so for that one, the opposite of negative 19, I guess some of the notes here aren't the greatest. This is going to be right here, as we had said, the Q2, right? The, uh, the, the Q2, we said, was negative 19 at the end of the day, associated, associated with the M2. That's negative 19, so you go negative 19, the opposite of that, divided by P2. Um, P2 is the object that you got at the end of everything, and that is, um, let's see exactly what we got here with that one. So we had said, let me see what we did for P2, guys, the image, image one, that was P2. So P2 was what? How far away? Was it? I mean, that was that was a pretty interesting point in its own right. I mean, we're saying um, when you were doing this, you were trying to find objects associated. Let me just see here, guys. Let me just try to be careful here. Uh, P1 is P. P2 is after you got, so, so P2 would have been D minus Q1. Uh, D minus Q1 was 50 minus whatever Q1 would have been. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of ways we could go here with this. Um, my notes are correct, guys. I'm, I'm almost wondering if you could like take a little bit of a shortcut with it. Uh, for P2, you are essentially getting... Where was P2 in relation to lens 2? So you got negative 19 in relation to lens 2. Negative 19 in relation to, to, negative 19 in relation to lens 2. So negative of a negative, that's going to be what it is. P2, where was P2 when you actually did that? Well, the way P2 would be, P2 would be the first image that came forth. So you're talking about if you've got, um, you know, 1 over F equals 1 over P plus 1 over Q, the Q that you got, uh, as we had said, guys, was going to be, okay, let me just try to kind of be here, okay, uh, let's see here, P, Q2, the P2 would have been, the second object is Q1, uh, and it's equal to P times F1. That's going to be, you know, whatever, wherever that's going to be, well, let's just kind of find it out, but be very careful about it. Uh, P, F1, P minus F1. Uh, let's be very careful here. I mean, the, the P was 13.3, the F1 was, was 10. 13.3 times 10 is this. This is 13.3 minus 10, that's 3.3. Uh, that distance, where is it in relation to 
uh, you know, to, to a lot of things, I guess you could say. Let me, so let's, let's take a look at this. So whatever that would be, uh, which would be somewhere on the order of, let's see, 30 would be 99. Um, for about 40, nah, 40 is not, yeah, for about 40 is about right. There's a little more than, you know, depending how far this goes. This might be 3.333. I didn't do the final calculation on that. But if it's three and a third, um, that's pretty interesting in that regard. I mean, then it should come out uh, to about 40. This goes in about 40 times, guys. Um, yeah, 40, right? So where would 40 go in relation to this? It would be, uh, you know, from here, it'd go to a positive, you know, roughly, roughly 40. I mean, I'm looking at that. It's 120, 100 and, 132, um, right about there, 40. 40 point something. Well, that's going right about to here. Uh, 50 minus that. Um, 50 minus that, 50 minus 40 would be about 10. So basically what you got is you're going down here and you're looking at it. Let me just see. Yeah, that's the P1, F1, P1, you know, and the P1, F1 is just P. So I wrote it a little differently in the notes, but it's the same thing here. You're writing this. Uh, sorry, guys, it's not. I hope, I'll write it as big as I can here. Hopefully it's visible. This is 50 minus P, F, or P1, F1 over P1 minus, I, let me just write somewhere bigger, guys, if I can. Um, This will come out to, right here, a little bit bigger. This will uh, come out to uh, the, the Q1. The Q1 is kind of it, its own neat dynamic. Um, Q1 is negative, negative P1, which is really P. So you just put in P at that point. Uh, F1 over P1 minus F1. Over, over P1 is just P. So you can write it like this. It's a negative right there. Uh, over, that's the Q. That's the Q. Over P1, which is just P. You take that. You multiply it with Q1, uh, Q2 rather, which is negative 19. Where you're going to go negative of a negative because negative Q over P. And P, P2, is the P F1. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the P F1. Well, watch. P F1 over P minus F1. Yeah. Subtract 50. All right, guys, that is quite the mess. Um, if you plug in what P is, we solved for P already. P is 13.3. Where is it? Right here. P is 13.3. You put... P equals 13.3, P equals 13.3, P equals 13.3, and P equals 13.3, P equals 13.3. You multiply the whole thing out. You just grind the whole thing out, guys, see what happens. And you got, at the end of the day, negative Final image is inverted. Yeah, it's there's your magnification, the final image is inverted. So number of ways to go. 
No, none of them turn out too easy, that's for sure. But yet you're looking at it, uh, you got 44, you got A, it's in front of the first lens. In front of the first lens is for that one. Uh, M equals M1, M2, its own adventure. Um, that's positive. I'm sorry, that's negative, rather. M is less than zero, the final image is virtual and inverted. For C and for C and D, you guys. Because the magnification is because the image distance under consideration at the end of it will be M is less than M is a negative. Uh, it is M is less than zero implies that the final image is inverted. Uh, a, B, C, final, you know, so here's B. C will be that final image is inverted. And we're done. Let's see here, what else they might have said. They didn't say if the image was virtual or not, but uh, if the final image is right here, and the light should be over here, uh, that is a virtual image. The image is in the quote unquote place where it's not, it's not where the light is going. So, or at least what you would expect the light to be, uh, to be found. So, okay, that, that's, uh, that's quite a bit on that part. Uh, it took a little longer than I thought it would, but uh, let's go to the cat's book and see if we can say anything regarding that. We may have to do that, I think, at another time. Probably just to do a fresh start on it. I'll just say we'll just uh, we'll, we'll we'll go based on the stuff that we had done earlier. Uh, we'll probably just go right with that uh, at that particular time. Let me just see where we are on time, you guys. Uh, there's a little bit of time limitations here on this. Um, but that does get us through survey, at the least. So we're doing pretty good that way. Um, Let me take a look. Let's, let's take a look at the, at the cat's book and see if it's something that's, that's reasonable for us to undertake like that. I, I, got, I got an impression. I think it might just be better uh, to do some of, the, uh, some of the same concept and just go. Uh, maybe I'll put this separately because this, this is a whole lot to digest, you guys. Uh, let me do another film and I'll, I'll pertain it to some of the work that, that's, that's going to be found in the cat's book. And that, you know, that could be as a, a drawn out, uh, challenging and wonderful process, I hope, at the same time. It's, it's wonderful for the teacher to look at some of this stuff. You always, you always uh, um, I, I think most teachers marvel at, at some of the process, just how some of this stuff comes about. Um, hope, hopefully the students can kind of uh, get much of the same impression. Um, so typically, guys, let, let's leave this for the survey book. Uh, we're done with the survey book related to um, related to reflection and refraction of light and the mirror equation and thin lens equation. Let me do the same topic but from the cat's book uh, the next time that we get together. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Take care.